been a wild week. Welcome to The Lowdown. Hey everybody, this is Michael Smith, and today I want to talk to you, the high net worth individual, about private alternative investments. And to do that, we're bringing our special guest, Bob Worthington. He is a managing director and co-head of Private Wealth Solutions for iCapital. How are you doing, and welcome to the show. I'm doing great, Michael. Thank you. On behalf of my colleagues at iCapital, we appreciate your time today and look forward to having a fun show. Well, Bob, why don't you tell us a little bit about who is ICAP and, and basically what is your role there and your function? Um, ICAPital is the leading global technology investment platform for financial advisors and their clients to access alternative investments. What we mean by that is private equity, private credit, private real estate, hedge funds, and other type of commodity type pools. Um, so that we've built a platform where advisors can easily access uh, advisors and their clients can easily access alternative investments through an ele electronic subdoc process. It makes it very easy to use and you can pass bathing and forth. We also make sure through our due diligence process that we give access to the top tier uh, investment managers around the globe. So, Bob, that's a great answer. And uh, maybe get a little bit more, you know, for the layman's term is what exactly is a private investment? Maybe what type of individuals and what are some of the limitations around? Uh, who could basically be qualified for a private investment? Yeah, sure. So private investments are really either equity investments or debt provision of debt instruments, direct lending, whatever it might be, to companies that are not traded on an exchange. Okay. So these are privately owned companies that don't trade on exchange that historically have only gotten capital from the largest institutions. But because of progress we've made on technology side, regulatory side now, individuals through financial advisors can actually invest in these vehicles. iCapital has been a leader in order to pave the pathway for individuals through financial advisors to be able to invest in these private companies. That's important because the number of companies on the public exchanges has actually been shrinking. Even Correct. though the market cap go has gone up, the number of companies have been shrinking. And as, as you know, America is a very robust economy. So there's millions and millions of private companies around, not only in the U.S., but globally. And now many you know, high net worth individuals, as long as they meet certain financial standards, which I'll go through, they can access that through that. Now, almost all of them do it through you know, registered investment advisors like yourselves who are equipped to analyze, do the due diligence and make sure they're going into the proper type of vehicles. So what are some of those limitations? Maybe are they are income ranges or is it a certain net worth provision yeah. uh, that the SEC uh, requires? What, what are those? Yeah, so we'll just go to two basic ones, okay. uh, really two general ones. Uh, qualified purchasers is the highest standard. Okay. And what that means is you need to have $5 million of liquid investments okay and and then you know that's also institutions need to have 25 million in order to get into many private equity uh, private credit private real estate type of vehicles but there's also another standard that's a little bit lower bar and that's called the for the accredited investors which is really a two million dollar net worth okay. okay excluding the house but net worth or you could have two hundred thousand dollars of income in the last two years or three hundred thousand on a joint basis so if you're an accredited investor, you, you can then invest in more registered vehicles that are privately registered, um, but they allow access also into all these types of vehicles. So Bob, let's talk a little bit about the access to some of these private investments and, and what, what is that like and, and what are some of the those limitations? Sure. One of the benefits of the iCapital platform is allowing um, individual investors through the financial advisors to get into these investment strategies at a much lower minimum. Most top tier private investment firms and hedge fund firms have minimums individually that are five, 10, 15, maybe even $20 million. Okay. That's out of reach for almost all of America sure. and the world. But on the iCapital platform, uh, through two different mechanisms, um, we, we have access that can be provided as low as $100,000 in more traditional long-term lockup vehicles, but also in those registered funds that I talked about sure. and BDCs, actually that access is, can be as low as twenty-five dollars to $50,000. So we aggregate all the investors and then 
bring that capital to the underlying investment manager that's actually running the strategy. And they look at us as one investor and we can bring them 25, 50, 100, 200 million dollars at a time that's from thousands of investors in a pooled vehicle. So that's a very important element and it allows individuals to put money into you know, a high quality investment um, product Diversify. And do so at, yeah, do so at a low minimum where they could never gain access before. So Bob, let's talk a little bit uh, about the the alternative investment space. You know, why do you feel that it is growing? I mean, we hear that it's a space that's you know many um, you know firms are seeing more growth in, into that area. Why do you feel that's uh, the case? I mean, is there is it because you can't get some of the returns or some of the capabilities you see in the publicly traded markets, or what are some of the other reasons we're seeing this space grow? Sure, there's I'll go three ways, and two of them are from an investment standpoint. Okay. Um, so again, very general, but certainly a, a, applicable. If you're going to invest in a private equity, private credit, or private real estate fund, most likely that's going to be locked up. Your money is going to be locked up. You can't trade in Illiquid. and out of it. Yeah. Illiquid, right. And there's something called the illiquidity premium. So private equity managers are, are able to go in and buy a portion or all of a company, implement changes, and because they're not subject to quarterly type of earnings estimates and all that, they can take a long-term view. Historically, private investments have basically uh, delivered three to 5% per annum returns over that of like the S&P 500. So let's take private equity. Okay. Private equity over the long run, if you take the average private equity manager, it has delivered 300 to 500 basis points or three to 5% of annualized return over the S&P 500 or the MSI, MSCI world, the MSCI global index, which sure. is a proxy for the, the global side. And, but you have to lock up your money. So people are now saying, how can I get enhanced returns vis-a-vis -vis the S&P 500? Sure. 15 years ago, they couldn't access that. Today they can. Second reason is also for diversification and non-correlation. That's probably more the purview of the hedge fund world. Most hedge funds are there to deliver diversification and non-correlation. And what that means is they de the, the returns don't move up and down like they do with the, the private or in conjunction with the private, uh, I'm sorry, with the public markets. Mm -hmm. and, and therefore, if you can you know, mitigate your losses and you don't have to you know, get the 100% of the upside of the S&P 500 if you mitigate your losses. So through that diversification, that non-correlation, that lower volatility, you can smooth out portfolio returns that way. So if I was to say break down kind of a 60-40, right? The stock to bond portfolio, um, I could find things in the private alternative space that would be growth oriented. So something non-correlated to the S&P, as you mentioned, uh, that's more on the equity focus, but also today, in today's world, we all know fixed income is yielding less than inflation. So looking at yield replacement is probably another way or income replacement for some of the alternative space as well, correct? Yeah, that's where we're seeing tremendous demand from clients, that just as you pointed. They, obviously, the returns, the basic returns of government bonds or high-grade corporates are still pretty low, even though interest rates are going up. A number of advisors over the last three, four, five years have utilized these direct lending strategies, okay. where a, a private credit fund and manager essentially is providing uh, lending, direct lending to a private company, and usually in conjunction with the equity being provided by a private equity manager. But what they do is they're providing that uh, that lending and that that credit um, to to this company, mm -hmm. and they're doing so at at a, a floating rate basis, like LIBOR, which is the standard for floating rate debt, plus five, six hundred, seven hundred basis points. So the return you're getting is greater than what you could get with a high grade corporate or a government bond, and yet you have you know you're lending directly to the company, so you can negotiate covenants and all those types of things to protect you. Now, it's not without risk, I'm not saying that, sure. but the returns from what advisors have told us and what we believe is that risk return profile is greater in a private lending fund than it might be with a straightforward government fund today that you can buy an exchange or a mutual fund. Bob, there's def uh, several different types of uh, private alternative investments. Maybe you can kind of give us a little bit of a description of the different types and maybe kind of what the specific you know, strategies that they have. Sure. So let's start with private equity. Okay. Private equity is a very broad category. Sure. Uh, most people think of private equity from, 
its inception where it really was leveraged buyouts. Essentially, a private equity manager would go in and buy either a public company or a private company. They'd put in a slug of equity, and they'd borrow a lot of money to finance that acquisition. It used to be that there was a lot more debt being utilized in that transaction than equity. Okay. Over time, um, it's, it's, there's more equity being put in and less debt, but there's still a fair amount of debt on that. And so they use both those things to go and acquire a company and usually go in and take a board seat, might also take control, whatever it might be, put in new management, whatever it might be. So that's one facet of private equity. Another one is called growth equity, where essentially you don't use much debt. You're buying into a company that's growing rapidly, but needs expansion capital and may not be able to get that from a bank, right? So that growth equity is just providing capital equity so that a company can utilize that to expand its operations, whether it's here in the US or globally, or expand its footprint, expand its customer base, use it to reinvest in the company in order to continue to grow at a very high rate. Um, there's also venture capital. Many people are aware of that yes. because firms that we all know like Facebook and Apple and way back when, Hewler Packard, were all basically came out of the venture capital industry where there's, it's kind of the, the notion, two guys, two women in a garage starting <laughs> a new company. Yeah. They, they have a great idea. It's starting to gain traction, but now they need expansion capital. They need expertise, too, from these venture capitalists and how to run the company, build the company, everything like that. That's how Apple and Facebook and Google and many others got started. They were very small companies with just an idea, maybe a little bit of sales, but maybe not. And these venture capitalists came in and, and provided the capital, but also provided the, the board representation and the guidance to build those companies. So those are three different areas of private equity. Well, I'll talk about a little bit um, as far as how to access. I mean, you guys provide access, I think, at, uh, you know, a, probably a lower entry than going direct per se, right? Yes. And you guys have uh, multiple, you know, uh, you know, strategies and, and, and different platforms you can access. But talk about a little bit about doing that and then how working with a financial advisor is advantageous to utilize your platform. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to answer the first one, okay. uh, the second question first. And okay. what I mean by that is the, the use of financial advisors in, you know, like I've been in the finance and investment business now for over 35 years. Okay. And I can tell you that most people, even those that have created a lot of wealth, most individuals, um, who have created wealth or, or haven't, you know, are not very adept in, in managing their own portfolios. Yes, there are exceptions, but those are the minority of it. We firmly believe one reason we chose to be a B2B business, meaning our relationships are with a financial advisor, is that we believe the financial advisor is critical to helping high net worth individuals meet their needs. And that's even above and beyond investments, okay? But when it comes to investments, most firms are gonna have research people uh, most financial advisor firms have research people, due diligence people that can make the decisions and do the due diligence better than high net worth individuals do. So we're a firm believer that <clears throat> one of the reasons the registered investment advisor marketplace has grown so dramatically above and beyond the Morgan Stanley's of the world, independence like yours, is that you provide the type of services from an investment standpoint, a state standpoint, that high net worth individuals, individuals need. So that's why we targeted our platform for the financial advisors who then can, you know, put so their partner clients with through you guys. Exactly. That's the way to go. So getting back to it, what do we provide? <clears throat> well, first, iCapital has a very robust due diligence team on its own. Okay. And it's now almost 30 strong. These are individuals, uh, men and women, who've been doing this for 10, 15, 20, 25 years. They know the private equity universe. They know the alternatives universe. They know the hedge fund managers. They know and they have the capabilities to decide who they believe are the best ones in the business because you want to access the best. Anything you do, you want to access the best. So that's one thing we provide. We provide access to top tier private investment and hedge fund managers in the U.S. and around the globe. And we bring that to the financial advisors. We provide the financial advisors with a 40 to 50 page due diligence report that talks about the managers, all the risks associated with them very transparent, and that's important to the financial advisor. Well, and I'll, I'll add and, and let you uh, kind of elaborate on, but you guys have a very robust technology platform. And, you know, I think that separates you guys from a lot of people because at this day and age, we're trying to get information fast 
quick and, and, and you guys provide that uh, digital platform, but maybe get, speak to a little bit more about that and how you guys put that together and, and maybe why that separates you from some, some, some of the other people Certainly out there. Certainly will do. It's, it's, it's really about efficiency. Everyone is busy in today's sure. world. Um, so it used to be if you wanted to invest in a private equity fund or a hedge fund, you'd get a 40 page paper subscription document. And then you'd have to fill that out and then you'd have to FedEx it or, mm -hmm. or send it back. And if there was mistakes, then it'd be sent back to you and, and vice versa. So we have basically constructed and completed, and we're always working to improve, a end-to-end -end solution for that that's fully digitized. So what we mean by that, first of all, the subscription document is all electronic now. So it can be emailed and electronic signature on the half of the clients. All the documents that are required by the SEC to, you know, to meet the standards of a qualified purchaser or a credit investor, you know, all those can be emailed to us. They're locked within our secured portal. Okay. All that, that's been tested by many, many people. We, you know, we, we actually do a lot of technology business with the Merrill Lynch's of the world and, and they put you through the ringer there. So sure. it's a very secure portal. So now a client says, well, an advisor comes to a client and, and says, we believe this is an appropriate investment for you. Here's, we're gonna tell you about it and why. Client says, we agree to it. Okay, now you send the subscription document to the client via email. Client reviews it, looks at it, signs the electronic sub doc, and then there'll be certain documents required like W-9s sure. and, and all the stuff and, and statements to say they are accredited and qualified. All that can be done electronically through email. It's a very, very efficient process. And we have the leading global technology platform for that. That's great. And it makes it much easier on the advisor and much easier on the client. Well, obviously, the investment universe uh, grows for the private equity space. Um, I just thought I'd ask, you know, what do you see going forward? I mean, so much of the world is changing today. Uh, the investment landscape is changing. But I thought maybe you kind of maybe, you know, let us know what type of opportunities and things do you see that lie ahead? Michael, there's a couple different things that are going on that are really exciting for investors. And one of those is the continued growth of the opportunity set in the private investment world. Now more and more private firms realize they don't need to do it on their own. They don't need the banks as much as they, they did before. There's private equity money, private credit money, private real estate money that is there to provide the capital they need to expand, run their business, make acquisitions, whatever that might be. So the opportunity set is not only growing here in the US, but also across the world now. And that's very, very exciting. I mean, many advisors or, and, and their investors are comfortable investing in the public exchanges outside the U.S. That's been going on for 20 years. Now that opportunity set is really growing. And there's tremendous private investment opportunities in Europe, Asia, South America, and Africa that will be growing. And as advisors and their clients get more comfortable with that, that opportunity set will just be open to them. So that's one. Second, I talked about it earlier about the difference between a qualified purchaser and a credit investor. Right. Another exciting thing is the growth in investment structures, registered private equity funds, private BDCs, private REITs that are allowing accredited investors who beforehand could not sure. gain access to this because they didn't have $5 million of investable assets. But now being accredited, and utilizing those investment structures that are, you know, not so much new, but maybe really seven, eight, nine, ten years old now, but are growing and advisors are being more comfortable utilizing them. We're getting better at structuring them to meet the needs of uh, the advisors and their clients. That opportunity set's gonna grow and grow. And what we see now is around the country, maybe advisors might have three or four percent on average of a client's portfolio invested in alternatives. The institutions and the mega high net worth people, family offices that have been doing this for 20, 25, 30 years, they're at, at a 15, 20, 25% level. Now we'll leave it to the financial advisor as to how far to take their clients. That's your job, not ours. But we know that it's probably going to grow from here. We see the trends there that over time, advisors are going to be more comfortable putting in 5, 10%, and for certain clients, maybe 15%. Again, your call, but we see the universe, and this is just, or I, I should say, we see this as a early inning game. We might be in the second or third inning of individuals through their financial advisor 
accessing alternatives. And if you do it in the right way, it's been proven that it just adds to portfolio optimization and should be a good result for the clients and the advisors. Well, we look forward to seeing you know that involvement. I think we've seen the liquidity provisions and a lot of these change as well. So you can ultimately design uh, different liquidity features, different types of growth features in there too. So you know any advisor can you know help to design that. But we look forward to continuing our partnership with your team and appreciate what you guys bring to the table, the digital platform and everything else. And Bob, appreciate you coming on today. My pleasure, Michael. Thank you for having us. As always, if you have any questions or anything you need, send us an email, get by the website, avidianwealth.com. And we'll see you next week.